day three, we headed to a Manthoka waterfall. Uh, I enjoyed that one, that was good. Um, then we headed to Chuck Chan. Chuck Chan Mosque. Yes. So Chuck Chan Mosque is definitely one of the oldest mosques. It was made back in the 1300s. Yeah, it was a really beautiful mosque. I enjoyed it. And the gentleman who was there, he was one of the locals. Um, he was so cute, wasn't he? And then he was like yeah. showing us like, look, come here, look here. It was really cool. We We then went to Capley Fort um, and again spent another afternoon in a fort. Um, like they were similar in terms of like it was always for like the royals and stuff and but the layouts and like the things in them and the things that like the royal families would use and mm. why they would use them, like, that was different. We had the best guide there, didn't we? Mm. He was so friendly oh, and yeah. he was showing us the best photo spots, like the best ways to take them. He we have really we have a few good. BTS uh, pictures as well, we so did. you can see behind the scenes <laughs> going on as well. So um, and then we had we had a really long drive back actually, didn't mm. we? We had like a two three hour drive. Yeah. Um, back from Kaplu to our glamp, which um, is in Skardu. Yeah. It's about ten minutes from the airport, isn't it? Yeah. So the place where we spent the night was um in a desert called Katpana Desert. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Like when we was driving there at night, honestly, it felt like we was on some kind of roller coaster. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna fall off the side of a cliff any minute because we were genuinely like side to side. Yeah. And then we woke up in the morning and like just the views were unreal, weren't they? Oh, yeah. It was nice that like, I don't know, I don't know what I'd prepared myself for, but they did <laughs> still have like running water. So like even you could, you could have a shower, no hot water, but you could have a shower. <laughs> um, you could use like, the toilet, you could use the sink. Like, so that was nice. Yeah. I thought being in like the desert, we'd have like more of a communal one, but it was your own private one, so that was nice. Oh yeah, so that was um, amazing. So we spent the night there. But no Wi-Fi also. Oh yeah, so that's one thing about Northern Pakistan. Like 80% mm. of the places that we went to had no Wi-Fi whatsoever. I mean, so if you guys have seen the, the last episode or the one before that, the place where we stopped at Upper Kachura Lake for um, Pakoras. <laughs> yeah. That's the place where we had the best Wi-Fi in all of North Pakistan, really believe it or not. It. Like, it, was great. it was literally like out in the sticks. There yeah. was, we walked through like this, almost like it was like a little village, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, like yeah. to get from like the parking place, then you had to walk like mm. maybe 15, 20 minutes on foot to go like through a village, then to go down and then to get to the like, so it's usually in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, um, like the phone network that works there is called ESCOM. Mm not heard of Eskom before in Pakistan like so somebody suggested that I take Zong and yeah it went really helpful so just a little heads up if you guys are headed to Pakistan um, especially the northern side of Pakistan make sure you've got Eskom uh, phone network otherwise um, you're not really going to get no signal or anything whatsoever so then we started day four mm -hmm. and the main highlight of the day was DSI so on our way to DSI, first we stopped at Sadpara Lake. What a gorgeous place, like no picture or no video can actually do justice mm. to It's the bluest of the blues, like absolutely gorgeous, amazing. So we did, we drove through, well to DSI and through DSI um, and we actually paid the local price to get in as well, do you remember? Oh, <laughs> so how it normally works is if you're a foreigner, um, they charge you twenty dollars. The car that we went in, it had tin, so they couldn't really see inside. So we said, "Levy's uh, Pakistani as well." Um, just a little tip: if you guys are going there, yeah. So we we're not we, endorsing it. No, we're not. But we paid three hundred rupee per person. So yeah. for comparison, for a local, it was three hundred, and for a foreigner, it's four thousand six hundred rupees. Like the disparity and the difference. Which wow. Is, yeah. So we. Continued our drive through DSI. Um, it normally takes about three or four hours to drive through. It depends on how long you want to stop mm. at like the places. But it was quite windy. We oh, wow. yeah. stopped at I think three or four points. Yeah. Um, and it was really windy, so we were quite quick getting through DSI. Mm. Um, we stopped at Ali Malik Top. We stopped at Kalapani. And we stopped at Shiosar Lake as well. Um, so what happened at Shiosar Lake then? Yeah, what did happen <laughs> at Shiosar Lake? I'll let you tell the story then, go on. So we 
got to, she has our lake, we got out, we were having a look around with it. He was holding onto the GoPro and then had not enough hands free, so put the GoPro down onto a bench behind you and tucked it into the corner, obviously, because we didn't want like someone else to like. So anyway, so he, we were taking photos, like we was just enjoying ourselves. <laughs> so we headed back to the car um, and started driving. We were about 40 minutes into the drive, like oh, yeah. away from the lake. What, it's on the side of a mountain. Yeah, it's literally, like, quite literally you are side on the, the side mountain. and it's like a track, it's not a road. Oh, yeah. So it's like you're going slowly and you're like bumping and everything. Uh, and all our footage is there, all of it, since like the beginning of yeah. Pakistan. From day dot. Everything. Yeah, like from the time we actually left the UK, we went to Pakistan and the entire trip footage was on there. We somehow managed to turn around on the side of a mountain. The guy stepped on it, literally, like, yeah. he gunned it. And we got back to the lake, and um, luckily, luckily, I ran out straight away. We got there, and luckily, we found the camera exactly where we left it. So we arrived in Gilgit, um, and just on the way, like, on the edge of getting to Gilgit, um, we pulled over because you there's, a like, a viewpoint where you can see oh, yeah. the three mountains, um, oh, wow. and that was just... Yeah, unreal. It was that was stunning. Um, put one up right now. Have a look. So day five was um, our first day in Hunza. We um, drove straight to Rakaposhi viewpoint, which wasn't oh, actually wow. too far. Um, and it was quite lucky as well. It was a little bit cloudy, wasn't it? But mm. it wasn't. It wasn't like crazy, like you you could see the peak, which we then headed to Baltic Fort. Um Baltic and Altic Fort are like literally right next to each other. And so we went to Baltic Fort. Um the plan was to go to Altic Fort again another day um on our way back, but we didn't have time. So we went to Baltic Fort. It was really impressive. We had a guided tour around which was really nice so we learned a little bit more about it. So we were really excited to go and see other part lake because we'd seen pictures and videos before we went there and we were really really looking forward to it. We decided to take a boat um, on Atabad Lake. We took out one of the like really really big boats. It was a bit of an old ones. boat, yeah. yeah. Um, but we paid about 2,400 rupees. That for us, I reckon, and I would suggest that you guys go on the slow one as well because mm -hmm. there's a, an option of going on the, the speedboat, the long slow one that we went on as well. Watch the video and you guys can see. Yeah. And there were jet skis, and there's a whole bunch of like boards and water sports that you can do over there now. But I would say if you really want to take the sights in and yeah. go on the slow boat because it's massive firstly, you can have it all to yourself. It's 2400 regardless if you're like two people or 10. So I think you can like enjoy the views better if you're like going slow. And it goes all the way around and it brings you back to the point where you started. So yeah. After we left the lake, we went to Gourmet. Yeah. We drove to Gourmet and that is where we stayed for the night. On the night, um, there was this massive storm as well uh, that woke us up probably. It was about 1, one thirty at night and I got woken up by this storm. Um, I'll put the video up right now so you guys can have a watch. Well, I don't know if you guys can hear this or not, um, but we just got woken up by this monster storm outside. It's 1am in the morning and I don't know if this is actually really happening, I don't know if this is a bad dream. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know the impressive bit was um, when the storm passed, the yurt was still there. Like it's how? <laughs> I enjoyed that because we had another long day of activities. Oh, this was um, one of the longest days coming up. It was. Day six. Um, we headed out first to Husseini Bridge. Oh, yeah, um, loved it. We went about 9am, so mm. we were not early, early, but early for Pakistani. Yeah. <laughs> um, it seems as though, like, especially even in the north as well, mm. like, it, people kind of start a lot later. Mm. Um, but yeah, we got there at, literally at like 9am. Um, it was five minutes' drive from our yurt. Mm. Um, and we paid 200 rupee each. Yeah. No, together, sorry. 200 together. rupee together. It was 100 rupee per person. Mm -hmm. It's one of the 
the most dangerous suspension bridges on the planet and you could see why when you get there because six foot two and i really had to stretch from one plank to another because there is a massive gap in between and then but yeah that was mm. the Hussaini bridge definitely worth um the visit though we would recommend Um, After Husseini Bridge, we went to uh, Passa Glossia, didn't we? We stopped at the viewpoint on the way. And then yeah, went to the glacier. Yeah, which was wow, an experience. That was that was amazing. What I've, an adventure! Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. So we were told it takes about 25 30 minutes, probably for a local, not for no, us, because like if you're no not, way. yeah, if you're not into hiking or if no. you're not used to like climbing a mountain, then it's going to take you at least an hour, if not more. I mean, I in our back. case, <laughs> in our case, it took us about an hour um, to get to the glacier. We haven't even got to the first point yet. Come on, let's go. So we did meet a local there though, he gave us directions. Yeah. We got on the glacier, put the drone up, it was surreal, like it yeah, was it unbelievable great. to see the entire place. Wow, like I've, I've never been... touched a glacier. I've never been on a glacier before. No, me neither. Well, it that was, was Yeah, <laughs> absolutely loved it. It was. So <laughs> oh my god, I've never, I've gen, I don't think that I have been more scared than that because, yeah, of what happened later in the day. But this oh, bit, when he was walking back just in front of me, there was all of a sudden this huge group of rocks that just fell, and there was this huge landslide. It sounded like the entire mountain it, was coming down. Didn't it? <laughs> it? It sounded huge, but. But it wasn't really all that, but it was, it was a landslide. So we're on our way back after getting to the the glacier and we're literally on the side of the mountain right now as well there's been a massive landslide so had we been five minutes ahead of schedule that probably would have been us so we got to be really careful and make sure we get out of here as soon as whoa <laughs> climbed so fast and the altitude as well was like horrendous so like i'm literally like <gasps> well you're like it's either that or you die so which one is it okay <laughs> <laughs> we after we um did the trail back from the glacier um we met our driver again and we drove to the kindra pass and the pak china border which... uh, the highest land border crossing in the world between pakistan and china um, the only disappointing thing was because of the pandemic, they've closed the area off, they've cordoned it off two kilometres yeah, before the actual crossing. So there's like a little gateway. 
and back in the day before this whole thing started with the pandemic you could actually go up there you could meet the gods like pakistani people can meet the gods in china and the other way around um unfortunately you can't do that no more but we got there about 4 30ish and yeah. by quarter two they were like okay come on announcing like, that wrap it up. people gotta yeah. leave um and it was absolutely freezing up there so cold it was, wasn't it? It was like minus five or minus yeah. six and it's... there was like yaks mm. everywhere the most interesting thing happened on the way back so we the plan was to go to kinjura pass that was the last thing on the itinerary for the day and we were supposed to make our way back from there to um, Hunza, where we were staying for the night. But the most uh, adventurous thing happened on the way back is when we nearly got driven off the side of the mountain because our driver fell asleep behind the wheel. Not once, but twice. Twice, <laughs> twice is the charm. In five minutes. <laughs> so um, he said that he was feeling under the weather, which is why he'd taken uh, um, cough syrup, a drowsy one at that. And uh, that's why he fell sleepy and actually dozed off behind the wheel and nearly killed us all. But do you know what? We're still here to tell you guys yeah, the story. So that's the main thing. I genuinely cried when we got to the car. So I'm not. <laughs> you started yeah. crying on the way. I did. Don't I was crying on the way. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel really ill. <laughs> <laughs> no street yeah. lights. There's yeah. no. It's, it's pitch black. Yeah, it's dark. So if you go, you go. Um, the Rima Bath, beautiful place. Really nice. We like, recommend staying there. Like, if you're in Hunza, make sure you stay there for at least a night yeah. or two. Oh, yeah. It's really it, nice. Yeah. Spend at least a night or two, luckily. We just, it's so, so, so nice. Um, the entire high street's got such a cozy feel to it. And, like, it's got a lot of, like, handicraft shops, local shops. You can meet the locals. Also, um, if you guys like me, um, yak. Wow. Like. Yeah. We had a yak pizza. Pizza. Wow, yak wow, wow. pizza. Oh, I'm happy Which now. Was yeah, I want to eat something. Yeah, do a yak pizza.